Brothers and sisters in Christ, today both gospel readings and the epistle describe the tension that we experience between grasping and letting go, or as Metropolitan Callistus Ware says, between clenched fists and open hands. The spiritual journey is one of letting go and taking hold of. Just prior to the rich young ruler story in the Gospels, we have little children coming to Jesus Christ with open hands, receiving from him, being blessed by him. And he tells the crowds, unless you come to me like these little children, with open hands, with expectancy, with faith, you can't receive the kingdom of heaven. And then in the very next story, the rich young ruler comes. And he asks, what must I do to, be, to inherit eternal life? And the Lord Jesus Christ asks him a question. Well, uh, or tells him, have you uh, kept these laws? What have you done? And the rich young ruler begins to list things that he's, he's been able to accomplish in his own flesh. Well, I've never murdered anyone, never stolen anything. I've, I've kept all these laws since I was a child. And the Lord Jesus Christ sees into his heart. He says, one thing you're lacking. Sell what you have, distribute it to the poor, and then come and follow me. The great... Uh, liturgist Basil once said that he noticed how the rich young ruler had skipped past the, the great commandments of love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. He hadn't distributed, he hadn't shared, he hadn't loved his neighbor as himself, and he thought to skip past that law, the great law of love, great commandment of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he went away sad that day. Chrysostom says to us uh, in, his, in uh, his commentaries, you know, it's not that wealth is the problem. Many of us are wealthy. It's not that having a wife or oxen, like in the banquet of the parable, is the problem. It's the grasping of it. It's our worldly attachments to it. It's the clenched fist that cannot let go. And so we see then in the epistle, the apostle Paul says, uh, in letting go we need to take on, and what we take on is Christ. Clothe yourselves with Christ, he says, and what does that look like? Clothing ourselves with Christ looks like compassion, humility, it looks like kindness, it looks like forgiveness. And he says, most of all, it looks like putting on the love of the Lord Jesus. But in order to clothe ourselves with Christ, we do go through this tension of, of letting go, of opening our hands like little children. And sometimes that's very difficult for us. You know, when St. Gregory of Nyssa lost his brother Basil, Basil had passed away. He was heartbroken. He's very attached to his brother. So he went for comfort to his older sister and teacher, St. Macrina, who we see here on, uh, on this side of the, uh, the wall there. And, and Gregory went to Macrina for comfort and found her on her deathbed as well. And then he was truly heartbroken. And she walked him through the grieving process. She walked him through the letting go process. And she said, it is very difficult for people to let go in this life and in the coming life. And he, she used some pictures or analogies for this. She said that uh, God has fashioned each of us like a beautiful bound rope. But in this world it's like as if the rope has lied in the mud and that it's accumulated uh, clay around it. And when the Lord Jesus Christ begins to draw us to himself, it, it's through the, uh, as if a narrow opening and the clay must come off and that can be painful. And this represents, again, our attachments to the world. 
She also talked about uh, our lives being like a house. That if we've built a big house around ourselves, what if it were to collapse on us? And a loved one would come and want to draw us out. But how painful that would be if we couldn't let go of the very house that had collapsed on us. And then she says this, you know, that the love of the Lord Jesus Christ will be like a fire that burns away the wood, hay, and stubble of worldly attachments. And it will bring us into the purity of gold. But she says also, but you know, in the, in the heat of that love, even the gold must melt. And so we see here this tension of a letting go. Uh, letting go of the things that keep us from the great banquet of God. And in taking hold of with open hands the, the gifts of God, the eternal life he offers. And, and uh, through the Eucharist today, uh, one of the most beautiful aspects of the divine liturgy is this call to lay aside all earthly cares. And even throughout the service we begin even during the matins, with many earthly cares coming up from the Psalms. What about my enemies? What about those who've hurt me? Lord, crush them, break their teeth. And, and, and yet we know that two hours later, we'll be approaching the Eucharist, having laid aside malice, having laid aside resentment, having laid aside unforgiveness, and all the things that would hold us to this <coughs> earth. And in letting go of them and laying them down and even laying down self-hatred, self-importance, self-pity, self, self, self. We lay that down, we let that go, and we come to receive the precious gifts that are offered today. Christ himself. Amen. Amen.